Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Just to give you a short brief of myself, is I was born and bred in Kenya, which is in the East Africa part of Africa. And I came to Australia about five years ago. And of course, being from Kenya and being from Africa, there's things that of course shocked me. And the first thing driving from the airport when I noticed is that it was so quiet so literally if you've been to nairobi city you know once you get from the airport you're going to hear a lot of noise from music coming from shops and public transport vehicles strict vendors yelling there's so much noise but here in australia is that even when i got home to the different suburbs you're going to notice there's almost barely no noise you don't hear your kids your neighbor's kids playing out loudly or music or your neighbors quarreling or arguing there's none of that so i found it to be so so quiet the other thing is that i also think that australia is such a spot freak nation so when i'm going to work early in the morning or later in the evening everybody is in their spots where they're either jogging or cycling or walking and everybody just loves to work out which i really really love i actually found out also the gyms are pretty uh, cheap and affordable i've never been to a gym before coming to australia and now i actually do work out from now i know you i know you can tell i'm just joking <laughs> anyway so the other thing is of course drinking tough water I know ever since I was young, the first my mom or my, my your parents always told you in Kenya don't drink tap water. But here apparently the tap is the tap water is safe uh, for you to drink. So in Kenya you have to purify your water, you either boil it or distill it. But here you can actually drink tap water and it's absolutely safe. That took me a minute to get up around. So I always bought my water but nowadays I'm, I'm happy to drink even tap water the other thing is that there's no shopping in the evening so you would expect it's a developed country and of course uh, probably will be more a bit more busy but no in australia shops the major malls and stalls close by 5 p.m even on weekends so if you're from nairobi you know life starts at 7 p.m PM. So after you after you work, you pass by, you do your shopping, and even the clubs are like sort of are open till morning. But here in Australia, uh, when I went clubbing, I saw some clubs are closing at twelve p.m., some three a.m., which is absolutely crazy. Uh, the other thing is that it's such a cashless society, so people don't use cash so people always pay for their goods either with their debit or credit card so by just pay pass everywhere you go but so that took me a minute because in kenya as you know even when you're paying for goods worth fifty thousand, you see people counting the money over the counter which is crazy i'd actually never used my card to pay for goods back in kenya before i came to australia uh the other thing which i really really love is the split billing so when you go out to eat with friends or for breakfast, for lunch, you always spill the bills. I remember the other day, five of my friends, we went out for dinner and we all queued up and everybody sorted out their own bills. So unlike Kenya, whereby one person has to take the responsibility to pay for everybody, which can be, of course, crazy and quite expensive. So I really like the split, the bill splitting in Australia. Actually, if somebody invites you to for dinner or for lunch, please be sure to pay for yourself. Nobody is treating you for that matter. Uh, the other thing is, of course, uh, the dignity of labor. I really, really, really love Australia for that. So what I mean by this is that everybody is able to get a decent pay so in kenya you'll hear parents always um, nagging their 
children you gotta work hard and find a respectable job by a respectable job they mean you either have to be a doctor or an engineer or something of the sort but in australia the white collar jobs pay very very well so uh, and they are referred to as tradies these are the plumbers the engineers the bricklayers and they are all considered to be very very decent jobs so don't be surprised if you see a plumber driving a bmw or a mercedes that is just the usual because the jobs pay equally well uh, the other thing is shared accommodation I would I don't know how practical this will be so what I mean is that like for example when I came here the first thing uh, I went into shared accommodation we were two other people and everybody had their own room but we shared the common area such as the sitting area and the kitchen so that's something I have not had I'd never heard of in Kenya I don't know how it would work out to trust a total stranger with your personal belongings and everything but yeah that's something of course and then it probably also because Australia life is very very expensive so we're looking at a single room uh, going for about 200 to up to 350 dollars per week so which can be quite costly so it's quite understandable why people would opt to do uh, to do the shared accommodation as opposed to Kenya the other thing that I truly truly adore about Australia is the security so you can walk with your phone on the street easily and uh, go on about your business you can carry your handbag freely unlike in Nairobi whereby you gotta hold for your dear life with your handbag because somebody might grab it but here there's absolute security and people are so respectful meaning that nobody's gonna call you names for wearing a certain clothes so people can be very so it's not conservative that's what i mean to say you could wear a tank top and some body shorts and nobody's going to ask you whereas in nairobi uh, you you can just not wear what you want you gotta be very very covered up especially if you're going to the city the other thing is that uh it's also a very uh sort of independent do you do it yourself country uh and what i mean by that is for example uh in Kenya, when you pull in into a gas station or fuel station, you're going to find attendees who are going to help you fill up your gas. But here in Australia, you have to fill up your own gas. So, which I found really, really strange because it's something that I'd never done before. Actually, the first time I did it, I had to ask somebody to show me how. So, filling up your own gas, you gotta know how to do that. The other thing is the uh, the playgrounds and the parks and the lawns oh my god they are so so beautiful they are also manicured and well kept and always always looking very green and also in the suburbs there are little parks whereby the children get to play they are maintained by the council so this is something that i really really love about australia and i was actually googling and i was saying i saw that australia is among the top five most livable countries in the world and certainly why not uh the other thing is the driving rules so just like kenya we keep left in australia but what, there's of course some differences and the first one is the traffic lights. There's literally traffic lights every other five kilometers that you drive and the speed limit keeps on changing. So you could be on a 80 kilometer uh, road and then before you know it, it's changed to 60 kilometers. And that's something that didn't, doesn't happen in Kenya. So here you have to practice a lot of caution because in Kenya, even when I'm going to uh, sort of... Uh, in the village where it's quite far from the city you could be driving for 100 kilometers and not even come across traffic lights uh, the other thing is of course the winter oh god i've been fortunate to travel uh of course before i came to australia i traveled to a few more countries but for some reason i only traveled during summer so this coming to australia on my first in australia was the first time that i experienced winter and it was so so cold so my legs literally used i used to get cold feet throughout the night but now after going to europe during winter and it was negative 21 i actually think that australia winter is very very bearable but of course they will still a culture show because nairobi experiences a tropical climate that is about in the 20s and 25 thereabouts 
Uh, the other thing is the language. Oh God, I love Australian slang. So it is so, so funny and can be a bit difficult to understand at first. So some of the examples are like, they refer to markers as McDonald's, breaky for breakfast, whinge is to complain, Kidonia is uh, a compliment meaning thumbs up, oh, which I really, really love. And lastly, but not least, is that people in Australia are so friendly and so easy going. So every time I'm going to work, you'll see people, if you come across somebody and you're working on opposite sides, they'll always say good morning to you. How are you doing? Once I'm going, when I go to the cafe to grab my coffee, everybody is so nice. They're like, hi love, how's it going? Have a good day, which is something I really love. And I've actually adopted that. And it's really, it really makes me happy because you're able to be nice to strangers and always uh, say hi and bye and thank you and those things and that's something that Australians are so so keen actually when they when they say hello to you and you don't it's considered very very rude so on that note uh, thank you so much for watching please if you have experience I know Australia is such a multicultural community with so many migrants so if you watch this video and you experience a culture shock that I haven't mentioned please leave a comment below so don't forget to like and to subscribe and thank you so much for watching today. I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye!